just give you a basic overview of what Meteor Up is and what you can achieve with it. So I stumbled across that a while ago um, when we were planning to deploy to production environments on a regular basis. And I especially stumbled across uh, because I wanted HTTPS support. And uh, that's something where I think most developers or a lot of developers probably struggle a little bit with, like all the certificate stuff and how to integrate them in some TLS wrapper that provides you with the HTTPS functionality. It's quite tricky and a lot of developers are not that familiar with it because it goes more into the infrastructure um, uh, section and you would have other people that do that for you. Um, but... Let's assume you, have, you want to deploy it yourself and you want HTTPS, you need that for some reason. Uh, I've stumbled across Media Up because it actually provides you the capabilities of setting up a production grade server with HTTPS support, proper security, your database hidden can't be accessed from the outside, and all that stuff. Uh, it's created by Arunoda, so it's quite popular in the Meteor scene and created a lot of packages and, and, and tools. And I think it's also behind Kadira, the performance measurement tool. And um, yeah, so the basic setup would be something like this. You have a local app that you developed and you eventually want to deploy it. And these are just three different deployment scenarios that I could think of. There's probably a lot more than that. So you could have just a cluster of two different application servers. You could have just a single application server without any HTTPS, so it's just a plain deployment. You could probably just git pull and restart the server manually in that case. Or you can set it up with a TLS wrapper in front of it, start uh, is used for meet you up, and uh, that basically gives you uh, the uh, HTTPS capabilities. But you need a certificate for that one, and uh, that's probably the hardest part. So. And uh, the main scenario that I was looking at uh, was actually this. So I had, my, I had my app and I wanted to deploy it into a virtual ma machine. Uh, so far only Ubuntu or Debian uh, flavors are supported by um, uh, Meteor App. So we accidentally tried to run it with CentOS and it runs into some operation where it requires root, but it's not scripted like that, so um, it doesn't work. Uh, so it's only running on Ubuntu or Debian, which is all right, I guess. Uh, you have the, the TLS wrap around your application, you have your Meteor application inside, and uh, the secure MongoDB, which you can only access uh, from that machine. So, just to show you roughly uh, what I mean, something like, yeah, hang on, I think I need to move that. This part, there we go. <coughs> so, this is what it roughly looks like. So this is an app deployed with Meteor App. Uh, it has, actually if I need to move it a little bit further, it has HTTPS support. Ignore the fact that the certificate is invalid, but uh, that's just a test server. And what I'm trying to do now is run a Meteor App deployment and uh, this page will basically change so there should be a new panel here. And since the entire process takes some time, I'm gonna start it now and then, oh, hang on. Oh shit! Sorry about that. Um, yeah. Hang on. This time, this direction. And so, I'm in my in my uh, uh, project folder for Meteor up here. All I have here is basically a JSON file, my pen file, which is the certificate, and a settings file. The other files are just uh, for fun. So, and all I execute here is map deploy. This will read the map.json file and basically push uh, the application to my specified test server. The test server is configured in the configuration. I'll get to that in a sec. So I let this start uh, um, deploying the application. It's going to take a while because the, the, the connection between the Wi-Fi and the server is not that good. So it now starts uploading the bundle. It will show you a progress bar and roughly how much time is remaining. Um, now let's hope that works. Yes. Um, okay, so that's the that's the main scenario that I'm trying to do right now. Um, commands available from so, so map is obviously a command line tool. Um, uh, you have map init, which just is you know creating the full uh, creating the initial JSON files on the configuration, which has a lot of comments in there explaining all the parameters quite nicely. So it's very very easy to get started. You don't even have to read the documentation. It's all in the config file. And uh, 
Then you have MUP setup, which basically initializes the server, it installs Node.js, it installs Meteor, it installs uh, MongoDB, and uh, stud if you have configured to use SSL. And reconfig is kind of like a setup, but it kind of expects an already, uh, or basically for the initialization of the system, it checks first, does it already exist? If yes, then just skip it. If no, then only set it up. But it basically works the same way. Um, then map deploy, what I just executed, basically uploading the entire app to the server. This one is actually pretty nice because <coughs> we're talking about production grade applications, so you don't want to afford the downtime at all. Right? It needs to be seamless. And that what, that's what uh, MUP actually provides you. So they have an old app folder, which is kind of like the, the previous deployment. And then when they, when they redeploy, they're basically copying all the stuff onto the server, and then they're just swapping that out with the current app bundle, with the currently compiled app, and putting the current app into this old history folder. So you can always roll back to the previous deployment. You're, oh, dear deployed something that broke stuff, you, know, you can easily roll back and uh, yeah, it also guarantees you that we, your, your server will be constantly up and running. So right now the deployment is running on the test server, but I can still do everything, it works, the app is still running. There's only this tiny little moment where it restarts the server. What about if you've made uh, some sort of migration changes to the database itself? Can you roll back that? <laughs> No, of course not. <laughs> that, would, that would require that you clone the database as well, right? Um, it's an interesting thought. I mean, uh, technically, it could be probably maybe in the future a configuration option, say, uh, run two Mongos, and but then you have to kind of export, import, and yeah, it gets a bit tricky. But uh, yeah, I mean, why not? So the, the thing is that Meteor, I don't think it's that old yet. So half a year roughly, and uh, I think lately they haven't really developed too much, uh, but I'll get to that later. So there's still a lot of things that could be added and could be changed, um, but it'll t it's going to take some time. So let's jump quickly into the configuration, just try to point out uh, roughly which areas there are. So you have your server config where you can configure uh, multiple different services, just a JSON area of server data. Uh, we just say, okay, this is the IP or the host name. This is how I access it. I want to log in as root. The password is this. Or use my local uh, uh, my local SSH key. And uh, then it executes the... Then you can configure how to set up the, the server itself. Like, should I install Node? Uh, which version of Node should I install? It might already be there. Um, which version of Mongo, uh, sorry, uh, do I set up Mongo as well or do I use an external MongoDB? I can configure that as well. And uh, they also have an option for installing Phantom JS, although I haven't worked with it. So I think it's some sort of testing, controlling tool. It just keeps it running. Restarts it, it pulls out. So that's, that's also done uh, by Meteor, yeah. So it, when it crashes, it automatically okay. restarts. That's the upstart part. So they put stuff into the upstart, so when the app crashes, it immediately comes back, which is good. Uh, we've been running. Uh, this one app for like three months now is decent traffic, and we haven't had a single a single downtime or complain. Oh, our system is slow and this and that, so absolutely fantastic in terms of stability. Uh, then the application configuration, of course, uh, where you just say how the app is called on that server. That's important for which folder it puts it in, and I think you can also install multiple servers, uh, multiple applications to the same server. Just by giving them different names that would uh, uh, put them apart. And uh, <clears throat> also, it, uh, you have to specify the path to the app in your local file system. So at the moment, uh, it's not pulling from Git or anything. So it basically just takes your local app as is and puts the code, uh, uh, compiles the code, pushes it onto the server, and deploys it there. Uh, and you can obviously also configure your app environment, which would include the Mongo URL if you're using external uh, Mongo database. And have you any problems? Let's ring her up. With external MongoDB? Haven't yeah. tried it. Haven't tried it. But so I couldn't actually get it working. <coughs> well, I think. Yeah, no, we've got it going on. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think as long as you provide the Mongo URL, uh, it should oh, work. I did do but, that. but you have to make sure that the, the server that you're deploying to can actually reach a database, obviously. So yeah. I think that's more likely to be the cause probably of the issue. Yeah. Well, so no, I will actually do <coughs> two DO instances, one with just Mongo, and one which is basically 
one from Mart, mm. and the URL wouldn't punch out to mm. the DAO. And I wouldn't have thought firewall was the issue. Yeah. <coughs> Okay, cool. Yeah. So I, I was actually quite surprised. So I mean, uh, apart from uh, setting up the last part, the SSL mm -hmm. config, where you actually have to create um, uh, uh, an SSL certificate, um, I put the link here to a blog article that explains how. <laughs> 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 so uh, that was the tricky part. So yeah. Um, so that's that's great and. Uh, so running that application, we did a few things that were customized. So we wanted some monitoring where I basically write out the IP address, the user ID, and uh, the currently requested URL into a log file for another tool to pull in for some statistics. So it's an internal system. I can't use Kadira for it. Uh, so we have to build our own monitoring, um, which runs locally. And so we were trying to pull log files and so on. And then we realized, mm, damn. Every client comes in with an IP address of 127.001. So, um, well, it took us a while to figure out why that happened. And it was actually because uh, STUT doesn't, as a TS TLS wrapper, doesn't allow you to pass an X forward to header to the request, which basically means that every request to your Meteor application comes not from the user, but from the TLS wrapper from STUT. Start communicates with the server, not the user. And there's a, there's a header tag that you feed in, but Stud doesn't support that. So I was like, okay, let's try to see what other solutions are out there, what we could do to kind of, you know, get that header in. So, okay, Stud, there's no configuration there. They simply say, we don't support it, use something else. And that something else would be something like AJ Proxy, Apache, or Nginx. And... Um, so that's where Meteor Up X comes into play. That's actually a development branch of Meteor Up. They started about five months ago, and basically what they do is they, they containerize everything, and they also swapped out stuff with Nginx, which was the main reason why I actually uh, looked into this. Um, so it kind of works, you know, you get all your stuff, and then you have your stuff, so that it's all good, but uh, there are certain issues with that kind of setup. So first of all, and I actually read a very interesting article about that which was related to the problem. The containerization introduces a couple of difficulties, um, especially for my project where I want a third party tool hosted on a different server, or even if it was on the same server, uh, to access the log files that I write with Meteor, right? But with my Meteor app on the server side. I write something in the local storage there. Now, what happens when I redeploy? It redeploys the container, it overrides your local storage which means you have no persistent, uh, no way of persistently store stuff inside your app, inside the file system. You can only use MongoDB for that. Um, so, and in the same way that you can't grab data out of the server, you also can't feed data into the server. So we had a, a little deployment process where uh, we have some documentation that's written in Markdown and then converted into HTML snippets, and then the HTML snippets are uh, copied into the server directory and then the server can read them and render them in the UI. So that's how, how it works. We just wanted to create the, uh, the documentation with, you know, manage it in GitLab or whatever and uh, write them in Markdown. That wasn't possible with that either because there's no access point to your app. Your app's file system is only what is inside the container. You don't have the option to specify any parameters for the Docker uh, container creation where you could mount certain volumes to it you can't do that. So there's a couple of restrictions that are uh, introduced with that, and uh, yeah, primarily the access to, 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 your, to your content of the container. So there's no interfaces in and out, which might be a security feature, but occasionally you just have to get into it. And um, yeah, so that's the, uh, that's the thing where uh, at the moment, they have a lot of stuff to do with Meteor Up X to bring it, and the idea is to eventually put that back and, and well, when they, when they got it stabilized and kind of releases that Meteor Up version 2 probably. So at the moment I, I read through all the issues and tickets in there which interested me and every single time it's kind of like the same notion, we don't have a test strategy. I'm not going to do any more development until we have a valid test strategy and a test plan so we can guarantee that we still maintain the existing functionality and 
that's an issue because I mean, how do you test a deployment tool? Right? You need machines for that. You need an entire cluster for it. Uh, so the setup for the tests is quite tricky, and I think that's why, besides, uh, yeah, and that's why basically it's, it's problematic for them to actually come up with a test strategy which is you know cheap and still kind of reliable. Um, so that's at the moment a very very big issue which prevents any further feature development. There hasn't been a push there for two months or so, which is kind of sad. And there's a lot of open questions. So the parameters for the containers is my my most important uh, thing. Support for multiple TLS rivals was mentioned somewhere. And we're like, yeah, great idea, but again, I'm not going to develop anything before we have any tests. Um, and um, yeah, so then the the entire Git uh, problematic. That kind of came down to the fact that uh, initially, I mean, it shouldn't be a problem, right, even to, to develop that. But the problem is that people's local environment varies too much. So if you need this kind of uh, the, the git global config for your system, which needs to point to the correct thing. You have issues with credentials and all that stuff. And at the end of the day, he just said, well, look, I have, we'll have to go through so much effort to kind of build something that only covers maybe 20 or 30 percent of the case and the other 70 percent uh, still fail with something so it wasn't really worth it at that point to implement it without a you know a proper approach um, <clears throat> and also the currently the upload um, not a hundred percent sure if it directly uploads it to the server or if it goes via some other entity, some other server, they talked about you know, speeding that process up a little bit because at the moment even if you're on great internet it still takes a long time, it uploads a big bundle of, of, co uh, of uh, stuff which could normally be generated on the server. Uh, so there's a couple of issues with the performance as well. Uh, not that it takes too long, I mean I can deploy like, normally on a minute or two. And uh, obviously also the tool integration Although there, people were like, mm, well, you have your config file, which you could adapt and then just you know, build a generic shell script uh, job in Jenkins, so that should do the trick. But someone asked, hey, can we not put the uh, uh, config file into Jenkins and manage it there with some context help? So I talked about the config for a while now. Uh, wow, it's done. So this is basically what you get. Um, it's, it's, it's usually pretty fast. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I tried it earlier. And it showed me something like ten or fifteen minutes. So, yes. so basically, that's what it does: uploading the bundle, setting up the environment variables, and working the deployment process, which is basically swapping out the current app with the future app and putting it in archive and restarting the app server. And now, I haven't. I, I'm not refreshing anything here, right? This is new now. So before. This was up there. So that's just the, the new changes that I just deployed there. So, and yeah, that is basically just one command line um, command. Yeah. And um, as for the, so one, one issue that we faced was also the storage of the project <coughs> folder for Meteor Up. So, I'm uh, quickly going to show you the, the structure that we have here. Um, so, I have a separate folder for this, and this is actually a separate Git project. You could probably put it into your into your actual Meteor project into the private folder, mm -hmm. but if you put it into the public, you say it's just been under a doc file, so doc deploy, and then under doc deploy. Hey, that's a good idea, actually. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yes. Yeah. Well, one consideration is that, for instance. I'd like to split kind of the deployment part from the development part, so the developer doesn't need to know how it's deployed. And uh, uh, also, what what I do here is even you see the you see the certificate here, only for the staging system, obviously. So uh, for the for the production uh, for so this is my Git uh, thing where I have my production folder, my staging folder. The staging folder contains the certificate. The Git repository for the production folder obviously doesn't. Um, yeah, but but this is basically it. And um, if you look into the oh god, okay. oh, hang on, um, let's quickly have a look into the into the configuration file. So you see, there's a ton of comments there. Um, yeah. Font size to uh, large enough to see. Yeah. So basically, here's my server array, host name, user could provide a password or provide my local key. Um, and this is one of the environment variables, which 
This one here would be specific only to that server. So I could have a separate server which points to a different directory. I can also declare global configurations like the, the, the Mongo URL or the, uh, the root URL here. And not sure if that <coughs> is required. Yeah, it's, all, uh, it's optional, so you don't have to provide that. Uh, so here, this is kind of app specific, where further up here, it's basically uh, server specific. Then you have set up Mongo true. Leave it to false. Mongo is not set up uh, if you're using an ex external one, right? Uh, set up node the same. Node version is very important. So I think even today's documentation of Meteor App tells you that it's 10, 10, uh, sorry, 0, 10, 36. Now, since Meteor 1.2, your, your, your Meteor App deployment will fail with uh, 0, 10, 36. So you have to change that to 0, 10, 40. Um, don't know when they push that to, to the to the Git repository um, or to the npm module in Nicola. Uh, set up Phantom, it's the same as the other two up here. Uh, uh, why not enable upload brokers bar? <laughs> and so now these two are basically this is basically the configuration where this tells me what my app is called on the server, and this is what my where my local project is stored, right? And uh, then you have the deployment check time down here, which is just, uh, so after the deployment's done, it waits for 15 seconds to check if the app is actually running on, that, on the port that you specified. And down here, the optional uh, SSL configuration pointing to the certificate that you're using for the server. Now, um, what wanted to say? Oh yeah, the app name is actually quite important as well, because you can, when you connect to the server, you can actually access your MongoDB directly by just executing Mongo and then the app name. So this will basically automatically redirect you to the correct database and connect you to it so you can run your queries directly. Uh, but you have to be on that machine, so you can't do that from your local, obviously. And, uh, Unless you got a yeah. Sorry? Unless you got a client. Yeah, yeah. No, but, I mean, the no. No, yeah. no. Wait, you you have a, you have what? You have a you have a, a Mongo client on your yeah. machine, yes. and you're accessing the MongoDB that is deployed by Meteor up on the server. Absolutely, you shouldn't be able to access that. Bollocks. Maybe it's, it's one it's of the it's, it's, it's SSH tunneling. So, so so it goes by an SSH, and, and it looks and, and it thinks. It's yeah. So that's the same thing as the as Stut telling you that everyone is coming from localhost. Yeah. Yeah, still, it's Mongo. If you're using SSH, if you're using SSH, yes, but if you just try a remote connection to the database, it shouldn't work. No. Yeah, so I think it's a very, I think it's a very useful tool. Uh, definitely helps me a lot. Um, there are certain issues, so we, we tried out Meet, Meet Your App uh, X because we wanted Engine X. Uh, instead of stud to, to prevent those issues, but since Meteor App X uses containers which are not exposed enough yet or not configurable enough, it for some cases it's simply not a solution. If you like the container idea, go with Meteor App X, but don't expect to have full access to all your stuff. Um, what we finally did was so I've, I've, I've been I've played with a bit. I used Nginx. Mm -hmm. And as just a reverse proxy to the port of my local app, and I also did the SSL termination on Nginx as well. Mm -hmm. So you're worried about certificates and everything like that. My app didn't have to worry; it's just HTTP to the app, and it just didn't care about that. Yeah. So yeah, that's how we do it. And it, and it, it works. You can works you can do all, that. All you got to do is manually. But you have to manually port. set up Nginx. That's the. But that's you, the, you set up once, and then. Agreed. If once you, can, you set up yeah. once, you dial in the port, you dial in the URL you're coming from, and then you can keep redeploying. Well, I reckon works. I reckon it'll take me a while to set it up properly with all the stuff. I'm not. I, I have no idea how Nginx works. What exactly it does? What it exactly it does? I don't care about it. I don't care about it. It does a job for me. It's a tool. So I don't want to set it up. I want something to set it up for me. It would be nice so, if the tool did it. Nice if the exactly, tool exactly. added and something in. And, and it does that with stuff. So, yeah. so, so just to resolve the, the, the situation with the portal that we had, uh, the final solution was we basically just went to the machine, service stop stud, apt get nginx, <laughs> installed nginx, put a certificate in there, pointed it to the app, and now it can redeploy and it fortunately doesn't restart stud. So 
all good. You can just replace the, the TLS wrapper after your, your initial deployment. That works as well. And uh, I use the start thing is just go from Nginx, terminate ESSL there, and then just go straight to the app. Yeah. Oh, I don't know why they started with start at the beginning. I mean, it's very, very simple, but I mean, Nginx is not that complicated either, I think. So. No, I mean, yes, it's a bit of reading, it's a bit of tapping around to get yeah. it working. But yeah. Oh, so it's start. I mean, I, I, would, I wouldn't be able to set up start either. So. But with Nginx, you just not use start at all, it's fine. And you just, yeah, exactly. you just don't have that SSL it's configuration a stuff in there. It's a complete replacement. So, so well, you just remove that. You yeah, don't have stutter I removed that and install it separately, and then also yeah. fi uh, uh, create the, the firewall to block the access to port 3000, for instance, when you're running your meter up there, if you want to enforce everyone to go through your TLS wrapper, which some people blocked. Well, I just, yeah, it's just on local host, so mm -hmm. if you're going externally, oh, yeah. you're going through Nginx anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.